Hi, and welcome to Module 19 of Three-Dimensional Dynamics. Today's learning outcome will be to take the, uh, the review that we did in the last couple of modules about angular momentum, and we looked at it from my D 2D course, and now we're going to extend this to uh, rigid bodies in 3D motion. And we're also going to review the moments of inertia and products of inertia, which we saw in, in the review from my 2D dynamics course as well. And so, uh, again, moment of momentum is also called angular momentum. If we look at a system of particles here, so I have a bunch of particles, uh, each one of those particles has a linear momentum, mass times velocity, and then if I cross uh, the r vector with each of these linear momentums, we call that the angular momentum, and it's about point P. So we can now extend this for a rigid body, rigid continuous body, uh, undergoing, we're not gonna uh, restrict it to two-dimensional motion now, we're gonna let it go under three-dimensional motion. And so angular momentum, or moment of momentum of body B, this is body B, about point P, this is a point uh, P, uh, an arbitrary point P, is defined as, now instead of a summation, it's the integral of R, these little uh, position vectors, crossed with VDM, which VDM, again, is the linear momentum of each differential piece of mass. Now we have to be careful because this velocity has to be, for, for the definition of linear momentum, it has to be an absolute velocity. So it has to be defined with uh, an inertial reference frame, which I'm calling this frame F down here. Okay, so here, here it is again. And we need to find this velocity V, the absolute velocity of this point V. And so um, what I'd like you to do is try to do that on your own and then come on back. And what you should say is to find this absolute velocity V, uh, we're gonna use two points on the same body B. Uh, we're gonna use point P, and we're gonna find the absolute velocity of point P from the uh, inertial reference frame, and then that's gonna be plus omega of the body crossed with this little r here. That will give me the velocity of the point out here. So that's the relative velocity equation, which we used all the way back to my uh, uh, 2D dynamics course. Now we can substitute that in. So I'm gonna substitute that in here. And this is the result I get. And I've broken it, <clears throat> broken it into two parts. I've got the VP part down here and the omega cross R part down here. And you'll notice that I dropped the omega uh, uh, B with respect to F and I'm just calling it omega. Uh, this is the angular velocity of the body B uh, with respect to the frame F. And so here now I've moved uh, the dm uh, over to the integral of r, and uh, since vp uh, is not gonna be integrated, that's, that's the velocity of, of a point p, uh, I've left this term alone. What I want you to do next is tell me what this integral of r dm, give me an, another expression for that or another way of writing that. And we've done this before in my earlier course, uh, courses. And so what you should say here is, okay, I'm taking the integral. Now, uh, th this r is uh, the position vector to each piece of mass in the body, integrated over the entire body. And so that's the same as the total mass of the body with a position vector directed from r to, uh, from p to c. Okay, so, uh, that's a position vector from P to, let's say that C is here, okay? And so that's a position vector from R, from P to C. Uh, and that is probably a little bit off. Let me, let me rewrite that. I'll put my, 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 uh, my position vector now, I'll put it more towards the center position C. And so that's a vector R from P to C. So I'm taking, uh, again, I'm going, um, R cross with each little piece of dm, I'm integrating it over the body, that's the same as the total mass times a position vector from R, uh, P to C. All right. Okay, so this is where we've left off. Now, R, little r, as we look around the body, is going to be, as we go to each point along the body, that's going to be, this is that r right here, that's going to be, have some component in the x direction, some component in the y direction, and some component in the z direction. 
Now, as far as omega is concerned, that's the angular velocity of the body, and so it's going to have an x component, a y component, and a z component. And again, I can substitute those in, so I'm going to put this in here, and this in here. Also, this goes in here. And I'm going to use that ve uh, vector identity that I've used several times before. And if you do the math, what you'll find is you now get h of p equals this first term, m from uh, times r, the position vector from p to c, crossed with the absolute velocity of p. And then as I put these in, my uh, other terms look like this. Uh, and so my next question, and we just reviewed this in the previous two modules for my 2D course, is what is this term here? What is the integral of x squared plus y squared dm? And what you should say is that's defined as what we call I sub zzp, which is the mass moment of inertia about the z-axis through point p. And my next question is, what is this integral here? Minus the integral of xz dm. And what you should say is that's a product of inertia. That's i sub xz about point p, or the product of inertia with respect to the x and z axis through point p. And similarly now, we've got this term here, integral minus the integral of yz dm. That's also a product of inertia with respect to the y and z axis through point P. And so now you see, instead of having these three terms, which we did uh, have in two-dimensional uh, dynamics, we now end up with another, this is a mass moment of inertia, this is another product of inertia, this is another product of inertia, another mass moment of inertia, another product of inertia, another product of inertia. So here, here it is again. And so I'm gonna write this in a little bit of shorthand. I've got h sub p now is equal to m times r from p to c crossed with v p. And then I've got plus now, I've got, this is i x x through point p, uh, and that's times omega sub x. And then I have plus i x, y through point P, omega sub y plus i uh, x, z through point P, omega z. And all of those are in the i direction. And then I've got plus, this is a product of inertia x, y, so it's i sub x, y through point P, um, omega x, plus i sub, uh, this is actually xy or yx, and it's the same. Uh, this is also i uh, yy through point p, omega y, and then we have plus i yz through point p, omega z, and all of those terms are in the j direction. And then I have my final line here, I've got i, this is ixz, okay? That's the same as this term up here. All we've done uh, is we've got i now xz through point p omega x plus i, um, this is yz through point p omega y plus finally this is a product of inertia again, izz through point p omega z in the k direction. And so that's just a little shorthand uh, using the symbols for my products and mass moments of inertia instead of the full integrals. And so if I write that out again, it looks like this. Um, and so it gets a little long. And so uh, if you remember back to your uh, linear algebra days and uh, uh, matrix vector algebra, you can put this in uh, matrix vector form. And so I have this first term plus now I've written my inertia properties, my products of inertia and mass moments of inertia in a matrix. And then I have my uh, angular velocity components in a vector. And you can see that these are the same now. I've got uh, this term plus I X X P omega X, okay, plus I Y Z omega Y 
plus I X Z uh, omega Z. Oh, and I see I've missed an omega Z here a couple of times. So this should be omega Z, and this should be omega Z, and this should be omega Z. So we don't want to forget those. Uh, and then I've got plus I X Y omega X plus I Y Y omega Y plus I Y Z omega Z. And they're in the J direction. And then finally, the last one, IXZ omega X plus IYZ omega Y plus IZZ omega Z. Now, this matrix uh, is called I sub P, it's, and it's the uh, inertia property matrix. It's, or sometimes it's referred to as the inertia matrix. You'll notice that it's symmetric. And also, you'll notice that it includes <coughs> in the integrals information about the mass and also the shape and geometry of the body. Okay, so here it is again. Now we can consider a couple of specific points. If point P actually is uh, the mass center, so let's say that point P coincides with the mass center. Okay, so this is C, and that's, this P is gone, and so C equals P. Well then, if C equals P, R from P to C goes to zero, and so all I end up with is H about point C is equal to just I, the inertia matrix for point C times the angular uh, velocity. And there's one more special point. Um, we can also look at uh, a point P where it's fixed in an inertial reference frame. And so V sub P, let's say that we have a hinge here. So V sub P is fixed in an inertial reference frame and we'll call that uh, the same as point O. Uh, different from this O down here. Uh, since now V of P has zero velocity since it's fixed, we just end up with H about point O is equal to I omega. So that's a, a, a couple of simple forms of this formula. Very specific cases that we'll use a lot. Uh, and so this portion of the, of the term goes away if we're talking about two special points, if P is the mass center or if P is a, f a fixed point in an inertial reference frame. And that's where we'll leave off to th uh, this module. We'll come back next time and finish up.